As we've already pointed out, understanding when to use the accusative and forming the endings is fairly simple. However, as you don't have much time to think when you speak, it's very important to go into a kind of automatic language pilot in your brain. In the same way that the gender of a noun will automatically come to mind once you've spoken and written it a few times, the accusative forms will just pop up by themselves if you practice them enough. However, as the accusative forms only occur within sentences, it's sentences we have to practice. And because in sentences everything depends on the verbs we're using, it's best to take a list of verbs as our starting point. So as you progress through your book, make a separate list of verbs that can have a direct object like sehen, essen, brauchen, or even better, write these verbs on separate cards. The next step is to form simple sentences with each verb using only a subject or the doer, the verb and the direct object. And then use those verbs in your everyday life. Give a loud, running commentary in German when you're doing things involving direct objects. Comment on what you're having for dinner. Or mumble to yourself in German when you fill the shopping trolley. Ich brauche, ich kaufe. It might cure you if you're a shopaholic. And have fun with it. The possibilities are really endless. Alternatively, you can take a bunch of objects as a starting point. Collect a few things you have around you and then try to use them as direct objects. So if you see a pen on your table, form sentences like Ich sehe einen Kugelschreiber or Ich nehme den Kugelschreiber. In the next section, we will try to inspire you with a few more specific learning games. As pointed out before, there are many situations for practicing the accusative. But here are a few suggestions to inspire you. German diet. By now you may think that we're somewhat obsessed with food, but here's what you do. Next time you shop in the supermarket, make sure to include a small packet of adhesive labels, the ones you stick on deep frozen goods. When you get home and unpack your groceries, write the German words for your groceries onto the labels and stick them on. While you put the groceries away, make an inventory by saying loudly, Ich habe. Of course, look up nouns whose gender or meaning you don't know and feel free to ignore the more obscure food items. Every time now when you use one of the labelled products, you can double up by saying Ich brauche, Ich koche, Ich esse, etc. Within weeks, you'll not only know all your favourite foods in German, but you'll also be using the accusative as a matter of course. Drill bits this is a very simple little task, but very effective in several ways. Have a look at the most recent vocabulary list in your textbook and go through all the nouns. Try to find a way to make each and every one of them a direct object by looking for a suitable verb, one you already know, you can combine it with. Verbs like kaufen work most of the time, but try to use a variety of different actions. You could very easily make a list of such transitive verbs, verbs which transfer the action onto a direct object, to speed up the process. Now make a sentence with every noun and try to mix up the subjects too. Don't always use ich. In one fell swoop, you'll practice the accusative, revise nouns and their gender, and learn how to actually use the verbs you know, all in sentence form. Make sure you use the correct verb endings, too. Cards on. And again, bring on the cards. If you've already made it a habit to put your new vocabulary on cards, a very useful habit and well worth the investment in time, you can easily make the verb cards stand out by colour, form or whatever. When going through them now, choose the ones that can take a direct object, an accusative, in other words. Mix them well and make sure that the English translations are on top. Count out the top five cards and write down a basic sentence, subject, verb, object, with each of the verbs as quickly as you can. Find your own ideal compromise between speed and accuracy. It'll help you in your next exam. If you feel competitive, time yourself. Self-correct your work and subtract three seconds for each mistake you make from your total time. How much can you improve, say, within an hour? You'll be amazed.
and if your cards are computerized, you can easily adapt the game. Just be creative. Ping pong. This is a game for two or more people, and we really hope that you've found some other German students to work with by now. This game works particularly well when chatting on the net. One of you starts by writing down a sentence with an accusative in it. The next person then has to write a new sentence, but reuse one of the three elements (subject, verb, or direct object) of the old sentence. The next person again retains an element of the former sentence, but not from the same category, and so on. Of course, you should help each other to avoid mistakes. For example, ich kaufe ein Auto. Er kauft einen Tisch. The verbs retained. Wir brauchen den Tisch. The objects retained. Wir trinken ein Glas Wein. The subjects retained. Sie trinkt einen Orangensaft. The verbs retained. Du presst den Orangensaft. The objects retained. Du suchst deinen Hund. The subjects retained. Not as easy as it looks. Well, some of these games may seem somewhat childish, but do you really prefer to read through your vocab list ten times and still not know the words, let alone how to use them? So play it again, Sam.